uh, I do it instinctively. So if I'm playing, see, am I, what time what time signature am I in right now? It could be a number of time signatures. Well, but I hear you know you could be six eight. Okay, so that's two four split eight triplets. So you could be four four. Well, you say all that, but but and and I know some of that is based on what I wrote you in that text. But see, you know, you're talking about how do I modulate when I'm like soloing? What what are you doing? And and there there is a right time and a wrong time to do certain things. You know, it depends on the conception, depends on the music that you're playing, or if you're not playing with anyone else. It, then you have the freedom to develop your own conception. So there, there's a lot going on. But but if you're playing this, this could be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, ah, 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 right? Typically, I think in the Spivak library, it's, it's written to a dotted quarter, isn't it? So, but, but this could be anything. This doesn't have to be, this could be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Now playing another stroke. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I'm playing three. Three, four. Now this could be ah, 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 say ah. The speed of this hand, for instance, that could be the new quarter note. One, two, three, four. find a new path and suddenly now you're playing much slower. You've demodulated to such a thing. It's a different kind of modulation. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so modulation doesn't mean you always have to be speeding up. You're just finding you're finding a new quarter note. Or the quarter note becomes a new group of fives. And the new group of fives, the speed of the new group of fives, every four notes becomes the new quarter note. Or every three notes of the speed of a new group of five can become now you're in three and you can just keep going and then change change fine strokes that blend musically that's 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 the gig right but we're able to play that's why we're working on the speedback library that's why we're working on the seven basic strokes to learn how to either it's that we're learning to play the uh, scales and arpeggios via seven basic strokes, or the other way around. We're using the scales and arpeggios to learn the seven basic strokes. But either way, it's all about ultimately uh, about making music, right? That's why that's why pianists works on arpeggios a lot because then they make music out of them, <clears throat> right? And we're trying to make music out of out of, out of the stuff as soloists. Okay. So so there's that. There's the conception, <clears throat> and then there's also the uh, execution, right? And and so we're we're looking at both. But to do that, 
and to make that sound convincing and then put that around the drums, it means that we, we it's very helpful to know what you're doing. OK, so we're learning these these motions so that ultimately, as Richard Martinez coined the phrase, we're 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 doing nothing. OK, and, and that can be very confusing. Well, Kung Fu Panda. What's that? <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. Did you ever see that movie? I, I have. I have seen that movie. Well, the end. It's nothing. I, I, I don't remember the nothing part, but I do remember him saying, uh, and I found the secret sauce. What's the secret sauce? It says, me. Right. Which is kind of charming. So, uh, so in, in, in this case, the secret yeah. sauce is, is this idea of, of getting out of the way. And ultimately, again, Richard Martinez, thank you. The whole thing is just a wrist turn. Now, how do we get to that? Uh, so we were looking at we were looking at alternating flams. Why don't you just uh, without the metronome, go ahead and play a, play an alternating flam for me. Or play alternating flams for me. Can you see? I can see here. So you realize you played it more than two or three ways, right? It keeps changing. And, for, you know, for a minute, it, 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 will, it will become stable in one hand and, and vice versa. So, okay, so here, this is what we're working on. And it seems so ridiculously simple, right? So I, there's not a lot to this, it would seem. And yet, to really play it evenly and to be able to bring the speed up and to be able to play it with dynamics. There's a lot there, but not that much there. Okay. So it seemed like, and you're right, for the appoggiatura, there was sometimes like a shoving of some sort. I saw some of that. Not sure I ever really saw an honest to goodness throw in the right. In the left, he you played it different ways. You would turn for the appoggiatura, and and then after a while, you started getting the idea that, oh, oh, it's supposed to be an upstroke, so you were doing this, and then at one point, it got pretty good. You, you know, you go at one point, started to look more like that. On the right, the equivalent would be this. That's all it is. all it is. Right. Uh, okay, so let's let's look at this thing with uh, with each hand individually. Okay, and then of course, often the problem isn't just about the the, the one hand. The problem becomes what happens when you seem to be able to get one hand and you seem to be able to get the other hand, but then you put them together and all hell breaks loose. So, so we're, we're going to, we're going to look at each hand and then we'll see if we can put them together. Okay. All right. So let's start with the right. Uh, and just show me an upstroke to a, a downstroke.
So, well, what we're looking to do is get that. So, now we're not only going to just look at the it one hand individually, but now we're going to look at the pieces of the stroke in each hand individually. Now, you played it a bunch of different ways. And turning, turning up for a small appoggiatura, or making notes before you go up that aren't pianissimo, uh, isn't wrong. I mean, oh, in other words, you, you, you can legitimately turn towards the ceiling first and, and then go up. Okay. But what I'm looking for right now to give you this feeling so that you're consistent. I mean, if we're going to decide that your appoggiatoras are always going to be a little wrist turn and then you're going to go up, then, then we'll work on that. <clears throat> but I suggest that right now you learn to what is an actual, the pure, classic Murray Spivak, Richard Wilson, or Richard Martinez upstroke. See, what we're trying to do is, I want you to just hold the right stick <coughs> over surface. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, so all you're feeling, all all you're feeling is the stick is just laying in your hand. Okay. It's just like. Well, I didn't take my first finger off. Okay. Okay. But so it's just laying in your hand. Okay. It's just laying in there. So there's not a lot to think of. But there's a, there's a particular feeling that occurs. Right? I can feel my upper arm. Now, this seems tedious, doesn't it? But, but this is the shape. Okay. I feel my upper arm to some resting on my side, side of my body, into about here. And you feel that? I feel the stick laying in my hand. Tell me what else you feel. <laughs> I was say all the painful muscles from doing it correctly in the past. I do feel those. Because you're talking about awareness. <laughs> I have a lot of soreness. Uh-huh, I see. But that isn't part of the lesson, but sort of. Well, it's an honest answer. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just just you know sitting in a chair and yeah. holding a knife and fork would perhaps you 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 got <clears throat> whatever's going on with your body. Okay, so we want to play as efficiently as possible to minimize stressing out any of those previously disturbed parts of the body. True. So tell me what you're feeling. <laughs> okay, so the body is relaxed. Took a second, but I'm, I'm talking about the construct. We're working with I know, the I'm getting there. So then it's hanging from the shoulder. I can feel the side. I can feel the stick lying in my head. Okay, what else do you feel? You're just repeating what I said. <clears throat> I'm on uh, all the points of contact on the stick. And I'm looking There's for... a little, little bit of tension in my fingers that I just felt and let go of. Okay, so, so that you can put it on automatic pilot, the hand. It's just laying it right now. We're thinking it's laying in the hand. Yes. That's it. That's it. Now I'm asking, what do you feel? It's laying in the hand. Oh, does it feel, <laughs> does it feel like this? No, I'm holding it up. You didn't mention that. Where are you holding it up? Parallel. Okay. Well, the take the stick out of your hand. Okay, so we know you're holding up the forearm so that it runs parallel to the floor, right? Or it would just do this. So we yes. whatever whatever muscles are you know uh, 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 are are pulling. These muscles only pull; they don't push to maintain this position. That's what's happening, right? Oppositional muscles, something like that. We're used to talk about that. So. Uh, 
and, and and so what would happen if you yes oh see so no. well you didn't mention so you were you're also holding your hand up aren't you yeah what's more relaxed this yeah you don't have to hold it up and what's even more relaxed right but we're, we've decided we're going to take on the study of playing snare drum okay so we have to we have to actually do something all right we actually have to hold the stick so go ahead and put the stick in your hand you know we've eliminated thinking about the grip essentially playing in the hand and and you're recognizing how is it that you're holding up your wrist What's my forearm muscles? Hmm. Okay. All this holds up the wrist. See, there's confusion. What's holding up the wrist are the muscles that are that are pulling to maintain a position other than this. Right? The muscles have to pull. These muscles have to lift the wrist up. Go ahead and try it. Just put, take the stick out of your hand. Okay. Go ahead and with these muscles, lift the hand up. Okay. So these muscles are, are, are not part of your thinking. Now they are. Let's go back into position. Okay. Now all you have to do is with that grip that you're not even thinking about, just let go of the weight of the stick in your hand. Let it fall. There, just 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 let it fall. And make it right? just it'll just fall. Lift it back up. It's as if you're placing it down. So we can we can either as as Richard Martinez points out, right? So I think this has a lot to do with what Dick Wilson called and, and Murray's feedback wasn't doing this. But Dick would add force on the upstroke. He called it bouncing the wrist on the upstroke. So we, we can either, we can turn towards the surface or we can just use gravity, which is another type of force, okay? So all I want you to do is you're holding it here, you're holding this damn thing up, ah, and you're just gonna let it drop it and make a note. You're just gonna let it drop. Okay, it just, it just lands on the bead and it just does that. You just let it drop. You just let it, you let it drop. Okay. And now, and now you were, okay. And now you're going to follow that up. Go on, follow it up a little bit. Right from here. A little more. Let's leave the bead down. And, and then you're going to do that. Okay, so show me the first part. But are we leasing it? Ah, you went back to back. See, it's really important to have this position so you can release it and know that you're only going to move that much, tiny bit. See, there's a little mo there's a little movement in this area of the wrist, isn't it? On the up, you feel it? Yeah. I'll show you. All right, so we're getting that. There's gravity. There's a little turn. Getting that and that. Does that? So you get some of that. It just falls. It just does this. See? It just, yeah, there you go. There you go. It just does this. No, let the fingers go when you do that. Holding your fingers. Yes, remember you weren't clutching anything? It's just laying in your hand, so it's. Now there's not even a stick, so if you did this, the fingers would, would elongate and relax. Yeah, why would you hold your fingers tight? Remember, 
you have to hold your wrist up and it's kind of a drag and you get to relax it, why would you, I'm going to relax it, but I'm going to hold all my fingers tight. Because I just, I don't really want relaxation. I, you know, the body is built that way. Huh. An amazing concept, this human body of ours. Okay, so feels like I'm letting the weight of the stick up towards the surface. There you go. Now follow that up a little bit. Come on, right here. Keep bending. Come on, bend. Come on. Give me something. Give, give me something here. All right, and then, and then we're going that way. You're rushing it. It's doing that. Do it again. The up. Oh, that's better. But give me a note. Now, now remember, it doesn't start. See what I what I'm really, what you're doing is you're doing this. You're you're trying to get this happening as opposed to feeling this. Uh, now you now you can go up. Right? I think Murray didn't even, Dick Wilson liked to follow it up, it seems more. Yeah, you know, Murray complained that, you know, some of Dick Wilson's students who came in after, you know, Dick had taught at Murray's office for years, would come back with a goose neck. You see, that? And, and so we, we don't, we don't want, and I think those, and I know those students didn't understand what Duke Dick was doing. Because Dick always got the bottom of the bead. You, you don't. But what he wanted to do is guys would typically yank the bead up. So he, he Dick would really focus on leave, leaving the bead down. He'd really make you leave the bead down. So you couldn't cheat and say, look, I'm leaving the bead down. I'm leaving the bead. No, you're not. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Murray, <laughs> Murray might have you just... Just make make the tap, and 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 have you turn. You can do it that way too. Dick would have Dick would have you follow it up. Okay, so we're getting this. We're getting we're getting a little bend, but that has to happen first. Then we can follow that up, and then we can make our strike. If you don't go pulling it up to get the the first little bend happens, not by there's, there's never lifting with the forearm or with the arm. There isn't. It's all wrist. See? The wrist. But the wrist has to do this first. It has to do this first. Then it's going to fall down. No. 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 That's not it. Okay, so you're not... Now, stay with me here. You're just doing this. That's not what it is. It's more subtle than that, Sherry. It's It's... Doing this. There. You've gone up. Okay. Now go up a little more. Bend a little more. Follow it up. Net right. That's how it goes up. It doesn't go. You're just going right to here. There you go. Now make your throw. Make your wrist turn. That better? Good. Now let me see that in the left. <clears throat> Okay, so again, we're dealing with all the same principles. It's a very different grip, runs through the hand differently, but essentially we're dealing with all the same principles, right? So we're just, we're just feeling, in this case, holding the hand up in a position is a little different. We're not in this position where it wants to fall. Now it's like this. It, it doesn't seem to want to fall as much. It's the way the body is constructed. When it's in this position, you're not, you're, yeah, but when if it did fall, it would just go boop. Just do that. No, it doesn't look like mine. Look at mine. Look, watch. Mine looks like the right. When the right goes like that, see, there's there's some kind of motion. Remember, I talked about there's this little motion that happens. It's something that happens in this wrist fulcrum. You no, know, okay. So, see, it seems to go up. And so in the left, when you when you bend, you just went, this didn't go up, it just stayed right there. But when I bend, I get that. There, better. Yeah. The weight of the hand seems to have 
create a reaction that's equal or opposite in the rest of the body. And it does something more like that. And you don't, you don't have to, it's just, look, just let it hang. And we're just relieving having to hold something in a position. This, now the fingers can relax. There you go, okay, better. Okay, so we're just gonna get our position. And once again, the arm is hanging by the side. The arm reacts differently in tradition than it does to a match grip, okay? Because we've got all these different weird positions, right? When, when you know, we get, we get this thing happening and suddenly you're feeling stuff in here that you don't, you don't feel in the right when you're up here. Feels different. Go ahead and try it. I know I'm taking a, put the right in your, in your hand as well. Put the right in your hand, you know what I mean? See, see how, look, look at the position of my right stick. Why is your right stick like this? It was on. Does it, does it come up like that? Mine, mine comes up. To get, to get to that height? No, just. Okay. My, mine, mine seems to be a little bit more in this direction, you see. Yours, yours completely straight. For me to go completely straight, I have to twist my wrist. Ow. It's more like this. Just, yeah, here, go like that. See, it hurts if you, doesn't it hurt, doesn't yours hurt? I'll let my fingers out. No, 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 stay with me now. Go in this position and, and hold it straight towards me and, and try to go even further this way. Doesn't that hurt? No. <laughs> there's something wrong then. Whatever you got going, no, there's something wrong. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess you could dip like this and it doesn't hurt. No, I, you're in this position and the, the wrist comfortably would only goes about, ugh, would only go that far this way. No, 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 no. You have to hold your hands. You have to hold your hands straight in this position. Here, go ahead, just hold your, with no stick. Hold it like that. It's as stretched back as you can really, right? It's about maximum risk. Okay, so it's there's some tightness here. I'll go any further. Now, now try to rotate, maintaining this position. You, you go to the go to your right. It'll only go. No, don't wiggle it back and forth. Go to your right and feel how much tighter it gets. You can't. I can't go any further than this. You can't. Or your elbow would have to do this. If you keep your elbow there, it'll only go here. No, you can't. It's got to be flat. It'll only go this far. Try it. You're just not going to hold it here and get the feeling of that tightness, huh? It's, it, the hand isn't necessarily tight. It's the wrist that the wrist wants to do this. The, the, hinge, the hinge doesn't move this way. The hinge is in this position. It doesn't go. It's like a hinge. How could your hinge, how could you take a door and move it? The door only goes in one. Yeah, that's all it'll do. Right? And, and you come up and you're, you've got your hinge stressed out. So then now make the hinge is like at a little bit of an angle maybe or whatever you got going. So you want to be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. You see, it just does this and this. Come on, come on, do that with me. Not hurt to do that. No, yeah, let your fingers open up. Right? Just, just feel open and close. Would open and close. Just see this. No, got to go all the way up. Follow me now and then all the way down. And all the way up. Come on, all the way up. Okay, and all the way down. I may have loosened up, you know, everything's loose, so I might have a little bit different range than you do. Or it might be the way our bodies are constructed. Or let it down. Ah, hold it up. Come on, and ah. Okay, now it's straight. So, so when you come up and you, you have a stick in your hand, it's in this position. Oh, I don't know what you... Come on, find the floor. There you go. It's not out here. Try to move it out. It hurts. Move it just a bit. Yeah, ow. Why would you do that? Ah, put it back in a normal position. Not too much, because then it will hurt this way. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's a hinge. You have to, you have to honor, honor the fulcrum, right? 
It's how the body wants to work. Why would you mess with that? Yeah, there. Now you're in the right position. And the left, going back to where we were, we came up like this, didn't we? In fact, I came up even higher. If we really wanted to bring the left up and we want the beads at the same height, again, it looked there you go. See how your right isn't out like this or straight? It's a little in. Now it looks right. Come on up, come on up even higher in the left. Because I'm I'm up here. Yeah. Yeah, you feel feel all the stress. You can feel some stress in your shoulder. It's like it won't go any further. It won't go any further. It'll it won't go any further. It doesn't seem what? Why is your elbow coming forward? Because I would have to for it to go further. Yes. Okay, but, but <laughs> that, that, that's a fair observation, right? Just as I said, to get this position, you have to dip your elbow. But in here, if we just follow this track, we get this. Right. You don't have to bend your body, but right. Right. How would you meet that? You'd meet that like that. So they feel different, don't they? Very yeah. different. Okay, so what I was saying is, we took us a minute to get back. But what I was referring to is the fact that the <clears throat> match grip affects the arm differently than the traditional grip. Okay. But there are certain similarities. Right now we're holding the stick in a position. Go for it. Go for it. Holding in a position. And then all we're going to do is let it drop to the surface. Not bad. Try it again. Lift it back up. Let it fall. There you go. Now follow it up. Just like the right. It's the equivalent to the right motion, isn't it? See, now you have a bend in the wrist. It's not a rotation. Now you've got a turn in your wrist. It's a little bent, isn't it? Right? And then you're going to make a, th a strike. Now it feels like at this point, there's it's, it goes like it, it unravels. This is where the tra traditional you are getting a bent wrist to a straight wrist. So is it a turn? Is it a rotation? That's not bad. No, no, stop. What you just did was what you were doing in the right, thinking that you got it. Look, no, it's not that. And it's, it's not that here either. There you go. Now follow that up. Okay, now throw. After you get to here, I, I want, I want, I want, you've got to bring that beat up. Better, okay, now put them together. You can't put them together yet. I know, it's tricky. up to the ceiling in your left. You're lifting up first. You're not getting that, that thing we worked on. You, it's, remember I said it's not wrong. There's a way to do it that way. So we're, we're trying to concentrate on all those pieces that we discussed, right? it is over and over okay so it did get better right it really did sure. so what we're going to do is we're going to leave you alone and have you not play to begin with and just have you take the time because you see it's how very helpful it is to have it slow enough so that you have a chance to uh, here's another Richard Martinez-ism. It's like a camera. 
And if you play the stroke slow enough, it's as if you can bring the whole thing into focus. Right? Otherwise, it's just, and you end up turning up first, so you've lost this feeling, or you end, you end up uh, doing this and then not really, not really turning to the ceiling, rotating to the ceiling, right? All these little things will start to get in the way. And what we're looking to do is play this thing slow enough so that we can really not have the mind jangled so that you literally go cross-eyed trying to look at yourself, which is, by the way, why it's a really good idea to have a mirror. It really is. Because there is a connectivity between feeling it and being able to see it. Once you can actually start to see it, it, it will mean that you're in focus enough to be able to feel it, to be able to experience the whole thing. Okay, because looking at it in the mirror separates you from yourself. And you become your own eye in the sky, so to speak. Okay, so I hope you're doing that. I highly recommend practicing in front of mirrors. Okay, all right. And then what we'll do is we'll 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 give you we'll, I'll give you some tempos for this. But really, the gig is is to play this so slowly that you have time to capture all the pieces of the stroke. Otherwise. It's like going to Jupiter and missing by five inches. Why bother, right? You're only wasting your own time. And I don't want you to do that. So just take your time with this and pay attention to those pieces and don't just blow them off. Okay? It looked better though. It really did. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording for a minute.